All right, hello AP World people. Let's do the last video of Unit 1, the Islamic world and then the other parts of the world. So let's jump on into it. Uh, starting questions. What is your favorite subject in school? What is the purpose of government? And do your parents treat you fairly? Are they nice to you? Well, think about this stuff uh, and answer these questions. So moving on. Uh, all right, now let's talk about the Islamic world. So I really talked up China, said China was amazing during this period. Well, just before the 1200s, Islam was the place to be. The Middle East was super awesome. But now in history, we're at this period where the, the Middle East is starting to break apart. It's starting to go down. And this part of the world we functionally call the Dar al-Islam, translated from Arabic, the world of Islam. And now during this period, it's definitely on the decline. It used to be this super amazing, best, top-tier place to be. And I mean, it's still pretty good in the 1200s, but it's definitely on a downward slide. And uh, the big country that ruled over so much of the Middle East was the Abbasid Caliphate. Uh, Caliphate is the Arabic word for kingdom, so there you go. But uh, the Abbasid Kingdom was now breaking apart, forming into like... 12 different kingdoms and they all started fighting each other and what made things even more complicated was the seljuk turks are now invading them from uh the steppe lands of asia so uh, kind of like modern day russia all these people riding horses were coming in burning cities taking over places it wasn't great uh, another huge issue was religious disunity between Sunni and Shia Muslims. I talked about this in my religion presentation where uh, Muslims are now no longer one united group and Sunnis and Shias will hate each other for the rest of history. Uh, there were also some Christian invasions called the Crusades. The Crusades are super fun to talk about. I might make a special video just about the Crusades. It wouldn't be AP World Connected. But uh, the Crusades are also wrecking the Muslim world, so there's a whole lot of problems going on. Uh, weirdly enough, though, while the Abbasid Caliphate was falling apart, they were making some ground in India. And I'll especially expand on that more in uh, other uh, units. But the even though the Islamic Kingdom as a political country is falling apart, the religion of Islam is still spreading around the world, especially in India and Southeast Asia, notably Indonesia, where it will eventually take over the whole country. Um, and now here's the thing. If we started this class in the year 1000, if we just started 200 years earlier, I'd say the Islamic world was the top tier place to be. But with the Crusades, the civil wars, the Seljuk Turks invading, the religious disunity, um, the, the, the golden age of Islam is not working out. Um, I mean, it's not like this is a terrible spot of the world to be, though. Like, there's parts of it that are, that are still pretty good. I mean, it's definitely going to be a, a very wealthy part of the world that everyone's going to want a piece of. Um, and this, this part of the world is still going to be a notable part of the world until around the year 1700 and right around then europeans just get involved in everyone's business so that's uh that's what's up with the islamic world during this period so let's uh, keep it going um now yeah let's let's talk about how this religion was spreading all over the world uh something you guys should know is the country of spain uh it was a muslim country from I think it was like 700 AD to 1400 AD. So uh, Islam had a 700 year hold on Spain and Spain's only been a Christian country for like 400, 500 years. So that's that's pretty uh, amazing. Um, oh yeah, so yeah, you even said there, 800 years. Um, and uh, the thing is Spain was this constant battleground between Christians and Muslims. And this epic 800-year period called the Reconquista was when Christians were fighting in Spain to try to take the land back for Jesus and kick it out of the hands of Islam. Um, and weirdly enough, the Spanish language and culture has a whole lot of Arabic influences. 
Uh, you can look at Spanish architecture and see some Arabic influences. The guitar is an Arabic instrument, largely adopted in the Spanish culture. And yeah, the Spanish language itself, there's a whole lot of words in Spanish that are Arabic words. So the more you know. Um, another part of uh, Islam's effect, well, this is sort of inside the Middle East, were the Mamluks in modern day Egypt. Uh, the Mamluks are kind of interesting because they were warrior slaves who took over the country of Egypt and had their own independence for 300 years. Uh, the Mamluks were really, really good at fighting. They personally beat like three of the Crusades. Uh, they assimilated Arabic culture into Egypt and they made Egypt super duper Arabian even to this day. I mean, the, the language of Egypt is Arabic. Um, so they, they really set up Egypt as being this amazing Muslim country. Uh, I should have written this on here too. They also beat the, the Mongols. I mean, very few people ever do beat the Mongols. Uh, and another thing we should know is the Delhi Sultanate. Oh, I think I spelled that wrong. Um, the Delhi Sultanate, these were the Muslim rulers of Northern India. And this is a kind of a rare thing during this period. Totally cool with synchronizing Islamic and Hindu culture. Um, and that's usually a culture that really doesn't get along. So uh, the Delhi Sultanate realized there's so many Hindus living here in India. If the only way we're going to manage is if we just sort of allow there to be Islamic people and Hindu people and we just high five each other all the time. If only this could continue for all of world history, things would have been so much better. Uh, interesting thing about the Delhi Sultanate, they did have a female ruler for four years. I'm pretty confident it's the only one I can think of in a in a serious, well, eh, it's not the only one I can think of. I can think of a couple more. But it's pretty rare, especially in a Muslim culture, to have a female ruler. Um, also, during the time of the Delhi Sultanate, the Urdu language became widely used. And Urdu, I think it's up there in the top ten languages of the world today. Uh, it's a blend of Arabic, Persian, and Hindi. So even that language shows how the cultures were blending together at this time. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, now let's talk about Islam with technology and learning. So during this time, the Islamic world was the center of the world for learning. You wanted to learn anything that was outside of your religion, you did it in the House of Wisdom. It's this giant library in Baghdad. It kept so many books from all over the, the ancient world. Um, here in the House of Wisdom, they invented algebra. So that math class that you all love, you can thank the uh, Arab philosophers in Baghdad for that. Uh, they kept a lot of ancient Greek concepts alive, a lot of Greek philosophy, zero geometry. And weirdly enough, so many Europeans like lost all the books and lost all the information from ancient Greece and ancient Rome. But there in the House of Wisdom, they had more Roman books than in all of Europe. And they also expanded on a lot of scientific and math concepts. So... The House of Wisdom was pretty awesome. Definitely the most intellectual society in this period was the uh, Middle East, the Dar al-Islam. Um, and yeah, this is definitely the golden age of Islamic learning and thought. Even though the Abbasid Caliphate is on the downward spiral, um, there was a whole lot of people thinking about great things. So uh, th these people, I don't know if you, they'll be ever be on a test, but you should be aware uh, Nasir al-Din al-Tusi, he invented trigonometry, so uh, so katoa, sine, tangent, cosine, that was his thing. Uh, Aisha al-Bunaya, he was an Islamic poet who wrote a lot of great poems about Muslim life, that's pretty cool. And Ibn Sina, this is a guy I definitely want you to know, he wrote the first medical encyclopedia in the world. Muslims figured out how the human body works, and they were like, hey, you want to be a doctor? Figure it out. Uh, the sad thing is, a lot of his knowledge got lost for a long time, and it only would be revived in the 1870s. So, yeah, even 1,200 doctors in Baghdad were better in the year 1200 than George Washington's doctors were 500 years later. So that's pretty wild. Uh, another guy you should know, Ali ibn al-Abbas al-Masawa. Oh, see, I'm saying all these wrong. Uh, anyway, he wrote the first how-to surgery manual in the world. So he really built off a lot of Ibn Sina's stuff. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if it'll ever be like, you know, what, 
What did Ibn Sina do? Well, as long as you know he was a doctor and wrote a medical encyclopedia, that's all you really got to know. Okay, so don't don't get too lost on these complicated names. But know there is a whole lot of great thought happening in the Islamic world. Uh, all right, now let's uh, talk about Europe. Gosh, I love I love these memes. They're so great. Uh, let's keep going. So Europe's whole culture is all about Jesus. Jesus this, Jesus that. Christianity, make it happen. Uh, everything in Europe, it's 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 all Christian, okay? If you wanted to paint a picture, it had to be a picture from the Bible. If you wanted to write a story, it had to be a story from the Bible. If you wanted to go to school, you learned about the Bible. There is really not a lot of options in your life. Um, and if you really were anti-Christian in even the slightest way, you would be accused of heresy and most likely killed for it. Hashtag burn the witch. Um, and there also was a political structure during this time where kings ruled over the land, but the Roman Catholic Pope overruled kings. So in a lot of ways during this period, the Pope was like the leader of Europe and the emperor of Europe. He was above kings. And Europe was so into Christianity during this time, Chinese people and Muslim people called the land of Europe Christendom the kingdom of the Christians. And they said the Pope was the emperor. And in a lot of ways, they're not wrong. So there you go. Uh, all right, now feudalism. Feudalism is the big deal thing in ancient Europe, or medieval Europe, sorry. Um, and feudalism is this concept where society is really broken down. There's not a lot of organization, except for there's a lord who rules over about somewhere between 100 and 200 people and the lord might report to the king but every once in a while the lord might be like yo king i don't like you anymore so there was not really any higher level bureaucracies it was a very disorganized very dangerous place um and okay and then in europe 95 percent of white people on planet earth were functional slaves held in serfdom uh serfdom is something i really got to explain uh, if you were a serf, you lived on your lord's property, and your lord could do whatever the heck he wanted, okay? He could buy and trade the land you lived on, and thereby also buy and sell the people who lived and worked on the land. You as a human being were tied to the land. You were not given freedom of movement. You were not allowed to travel more than you know 20 miles outside of where you grew up. You were stuck there forever and if your lord needed soldiers for a war he would recruit you if your lord needed people to learn about blacksmithing he would you know find some people force them to learn about blacksmithing um there was always so much war and violence in europe it was really hard for anyone to care about the welfare of the serf slaves living on your land being a serf was really rough if your lord was under attack the serfs were the first people to die every time um and so much of the land was divided into these farming communities called the ma the manor system based around a lord's residence or castle so it's like these serfs never owned the land the lord always owned the land the serfs were never given an education uh being a white person during this time period was not good it was it was a really bad time uh and all of europe was decentralized monarchies so I think I've already mentioned this a little bit in this slide, but kings had numerous lords, and there were many times when the lords fought against their kings, very little consistency with borders, royal lineage was also all over the place. Um, and th this period is also known as the Dark Ages. It's, there's no real learning happening, no real inventions are happening. It's uh, violence, sadness, and Jesus. That's that's what you get in feudalism. Oh, and slavery. Should have added that in there, too. Uh, all right, now let's talk about Europa Barborum. Oh, that's that's how you say uh, European barbarians in, in Latin. Uh, Europe was just terribly brutal and violent, okay? If, if I just did a course called The History of War, Europe would take 75% of the book and the course's time, like... The, the two world wars were almost entirely fought in Europe. Well, World War II, there's a lot in the Pacific too. But anyway, the vast majority of fighting, violence, and dying occurred.
occurs on the European continent. And, uh, hey, what can I say? White people, right? Um, and weirdly enough, uh, in the last 80 years, so since the end of World War II to today, Europe has been in its most peaceful period ever in all of human history. Um, but <laughs> we're, we're not talking about today. We're talking about 800 years ago. And a big problem 800 years ago would be the Vikings. And I'm really excited about the video game Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's going to be epic. Uh, but anyway, Vikings would raid everywhere. They would go up rivers. You would try to run and hide in your nearby castle and wait them out. And that's why they had castles all over Europe. People were like, oh no, the Vikings are coming. Quick hide behind those walls. So it's very dangerous, very politically fragmented. Um, in, in fact, so many countries that we know in Europe today just didn't exist. Okay, like Italy isn't a country until the 1870s. Germany isn't a country until the 1880s. So it's these tiny little kingdoms constantly at war all the time. And kings would declare war for just silly reasons. It's like, I love that girl. I'm going to send thousands of people to die to try to win her back. Like, oh, God, it's, it's, it's the worst. It's, it's a crazy place. Europe, thumbs down, okay? Thumbs down for Europe during this period. Um, now let's learn about the Americas. So uh, a couple of countries you should be aware of that existed in the Americas at this time were the Maya. The Maya were in modern-day Yucatan Peninsula, so kind of modern-day Mexico. They studied a lot of astronomy. Uh, interestingly enough, they thought time was a circle. And in the year 2012, they, uh, like they sort of predicted the world would end. But they, it's not quite that easy. They predicted that a new cycle would begin. So according to the Maya, we are now eight years into cycle seven. Hey, lucky number seven. We did it. Um, and the Maya, they had a government ruled by a council. So they didn't exactly have a king. That's unusual for this period. Um, but they were in a constant civil war that decimated their society. So uh, civil war, it's the worst. Um, and then the other people you should know are the Mexica. They were pretty close by the Aztecs. They were kind of in central Mexico. Uh, the Mexica are also known as the Aztecs, and they're a hardcore warrior culture. If there was any culture, well, now nah, there's a couple American cultures I think are pretty awesome too. But as far as Mexican cultures, uh, they they would fight you. Uh, and the big thing about them is human sacrifice. I think the Maya might have done a little bit of human sacrifice, and the Inca also did too. But the the, the Mexica they did a lot of human sacrifice. Uh, they also forced other tribes to pay them money. That's called tribute. And if you didn't pay them, well, some of your people are going to get kidnapped and thrown up to the sun god. Um, okay, and then the other uh, culture you should know is the Inca. The Inca were in South America, uh, kind of in modern-day Peru and Chile. They built a really awesome road system. And they were probably the most organized government in the Americas. They also had a pretty awesome military, too. They pushed around some other cultures in South America. So in that way, them and the Aztecs are similar. But if they ever did encounter each other, I'm sure the Aztecs would have won. So checking on out. Um, and then here's some uh, early city-states that existed in what is now the United States of America. So let's first talk about Mesa Verde or the Chaco people. And they're in modern-day Colorado, New Mexico, and still some of their cities or le leftover buildings are still there. Uh, they built this city inside of a canyon. It looks super cool. I really should check it out myself. Um, they had a really bad drought in the year 1285. It led to starvation. And during that drought, there was cannibalism, and everyone died or left. So uh, those, that civilization kind of faded out. Okay, The environment screwed them over. Um, and the other civilization you definitely got to know about is Cahokia. And Cahokia was civilization of modern-day Missouri. They built these giant mounds on the ground. Kind of looks like pyramids. I've got the picture there in the bottom right. And they were the biggest city north of Mexico. And also, right around the same time as Mesa Verde and Chaco, uh, in the year 1300, they abandoned their cities due to poor harvests. And when... You know, people were exploring the United States of America, we would find these cities and be like, whoa, where did these come from? Ancient cities in the past. Kind of cool. Uh, all right, now let's talk a little bit about Africa. Get it. So Great Zimbabwe was this big old city in southern Africa. We know it traded with China and the Islamic world. It showed Africa was in the Iron Age. 
I've got a pretty good video about this. I'll include it in the video links. Uh, Ethiopia. Gotta love Ethiopia. The first Christian kingdom in the whole world. And they are still a pretty hardcore Christian country to this day. They made a special version of Christianity called Ethiopian Orthodoxy. Still a big part of their culture. But Ethiopia is literally surrounded by Muslim neighbors. And that has been a, a constant state of conflict for their culture all through human history. And last one to talk about is the Hausa kingdoms in modern day Niger. And these are Muslim majority countries constantly at war with each other, leads to a lot of instability. But the Hausa kingdoms did trade extensively with the Muslim world. And there was a whole lot of gold in the Hausa kingdoms. And I'll talk about that more in the next unit. So, boom. Uh, okay, so my uh, big question for you guys, and this should reflect on all of the videos in Unit 1, are uh, reflect on the major societies, rank them in order of culture, economy, diversity, religious faith. It'd also be fun to rank them in, like, warfare. I might think of some more ways to rank these societies. But uh, anyway, I'm glad y'all watched this stuff. Peace out.